Hey guys, so let's talk about how you can use a sync await with Cypress. Now, here is an example from Gleb's network exercises. In this one, we have four requests. Cypress commands are serial, so when you write it out like this, each request will happen one at a time. So these four requests will take, each one of them is 10 seconds, so it takes 40 seconds. So the question is about how to make everything in parallel. So instead of using the side request API, we can use the Windows fetch API. So what we do is just yield that fetch and then use it. By the way, this is just the different behavior of side then API to specify the timeout. This is something that we do. We fetch and then yield the body with res.json and then make the assertion. But here's an interesting thing. So as soon as I run it, it looks like it has ran but not really. So if we wait a little bit and maybe if we want to console log it. So after 10 seconds, we see this R1 for this assertion happening. So this is interesting behavior, right? Like you save it, it's green. It sent some requests out, but we didn't really get that response back. See, this is, yeah, console. <laughs> so it takes 10 seconds to show that there. But if we do it correctly, it's going to take 10 seconds for us to see the value of this R1. That made me think, okay, well, then probably you could try async awaiting it. So let's see that version. So to async await it, all we have to do is put this async keyword here and then the await keyword. and Effectively, this thing does the same exact thing that we need, right? Let's just skip that, skip this. Let's skip the parallel version of things. Okay. Yeah. I, I, you see this spinning, so this is kind of what we want, right? It's spinning, and then in 10 seconds, we're going to get this R1 response. You might not like this double away JSON, but you know it is basically the same thing as you know just uh, if you did this and then said away if you want JSON, it's exactly the same thing. I just dislike variable assignments because they think I think they're a code smell. You can just shape the data however you like and give the value at the end, whether you're testing or doing development, it's the same thing. Anyway, so we can use async await inside the side then, which is the big highlight here. But that makes me think, why do we even need this, right? This, when you do an immediate return instead of awaiting something, that uh, you don't need the await keyword, right? And you don't even need the async keyword. So if we did in this first example, let me just go back to here, this one. And if you remember, the problem is we just get this passing thing right away. It's not spinning like the await version. So we just do an immediate return so that you don't need anything like a sync await, right? There we go. So it's going to spin. And then in 10 seconds, it's going to yield a value and do the assertion. So immediately returning something is the way to go if you don't want to use a sync await. And if you want to use a sync await, use it in our side then, which is quite okay. Now let's look at the actual question, like how do we make it happen? So let's just look at this part. Since we can use the async keyword, we can put all these fetches inside an array. And at the end, we can say promise all and then wait for all those promises again without waiting the results. And then we're yielding the results to the chain so that we can do the assertion later then we can just and that part is just like this it's not I mean, we could do this differently we could put all these expect statements here and check this big array of arrays without having to spread it that part isn't that interesting it doesn't really matter but here we're going to see this first one happen for 10 seconds and then the second block will happen oops here not only and you could by the way just assign this to a function and shorten it but it's not necessary here 
So the first one happens and then the second one happens with both of them in parallel. We're using a sync await and we're returning it at the end. But then this makes me think like, why do we even need this version, right? Like we could just immediately return all that instead of the clunky async await syntax, which everyone is addicted to using because they don't know what to do with their variables. I don't know what to do with it. Let me assign it to something. Well, all we're doing here is this part, right? So, so if we just said, uh, so let's just do this from this all that wrap that thing. Okay. And at the end, we're just returning that. Okay. And I don't just the immediate return. Like, why do you need to type that out? Just shorten things. All right, so immediate return, promise all. Let's see if this version works. All right, it's going to do the first one, immediately returning the fetch. No, I think I'll wait. It's going to take 10 seconds. And then, switch. actually, this is funny because it failed in the first one here. Did I mess up some syntax? Yep, I think I did. Anyway, let's just do this part. That's the only part I want to see what. Yeah, as you see, the immediate return is perfectly fine doing promise OK. Did I do something else? I did the code. Oops, look at that one. Oh dear. There we go. Nope, so you see them went parallel in 10 seconds. They all happen. Really, no difference between immediate returning or doing all these variable assignments, which are all unnecessary. I so much dislike seeing this stuff in the code that's just yeah once once you know so let's just make this part work too okay let's see yep this should be just fine all right the first one runs no i think that way just immediate returning does its thing 10 seconds and then we do the second part the full calls in parallel, immediate returning. Actually, let's just return this to see. We, we're not awaiting, so we don't even need the async here, right? Uh, let's just run that again. So no async await, perfectly fine. And then the async await version. It's just the same thing. So the, the parallel version, I wouldn't bother with this. I wouldn't bother with variable assignments. Maybe the single version, right? You, know, you could say the bottom part. Let's just remove console locks, see how they look. Maybe the bottom one is slightly more pleasing to look at. Yeah, we could declutter it a little bit, maybe. I don't know, maybe the bottom one, like, yeah. I mean, you're just cleaning it up with immediate returns, right? It's not really fits here. I mean, it's it's still the same lines of code if you want it to be, right? So yielding the response.json out, yielding that out, and then doing the expect. And I could see why someone would prefer the bottom one when it's a single call scenario. You know, between this part and this part, yeah, maybe the same version is okay. Uh, but for sure, the promise all version, where all of them are parallelized, just do your immediate return, right? It's perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so those are the highlights. If you want to use a sync await, you can do it with side end, you can have this side end thing and then the entire T of the code with a sync awaits in there. Um, but most of the time, you don't need it. You don't need a sync await because you can just do immediate returns. Even in non-Cypress, regular JavaScript code, 
it wouldn't just be immediate returns. Like I, when I see return await something, I'm like eh, why? Like some linter should want to guess that, saying hey, if you're doing a return, you don't need to await anything. So and then if, when you do immediate return, you don't even need a sync. That in that case, that's all. I hope this was entertaining. Not to use a sync await, but Cypress enjoy.